Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how do you leave the narcissist? I get a lot of people that are unsure, you know, how to go about leaving a narcissist. And it really depends on your situation with that person. And I mean, obviously, if you're married to somebody, it's tricky. You've got to get an attorney. You've got to have a plan. You've also got to look at the type of narcissist that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a malignant narcissist, somebody who can be violent, somebody who could be dangerous, somebody where you're worried about you know, physical harm being done to you, you've got to leave in silence and be careful because this person could be very dangerous. Malignant narcissists are the ones that will stalk you. They will, you know, they could get really, really wicked with it. They have very little, if any, em empathy at all. So you have to leave in silence and you don't let the malignant narcissist know when you're leaving, okay? Because that's when you could be in most danger. That's when you see these cases on 48 hours or Dateline, you know, they went up to the person and they said, oh, I'm going to divorce you. Oh, I'm going to leave you. And then the next day you found the person dead, all right? Because that's when you're in the most danger with a malignant narcissist is when you tell them that you're leaving. This is why you don't tell them that you're leaving when you're dealing with a dangerous person. And how do you know you're dealing with a malignant narcissist? Well, they've gotten violent with you. They may have put their hands on you. They may have pushed you. They may break things. They may punch walls. You find yourself walking on eggshells. And the funny thing is, so many people talk about how the covert narcissist is the most dangerous. But really, if you've dealt with a malignant narcissist, they really are the most dangerous. Or a covert malignant narcissist is really the, the creme de the creme, besides being a, a, a psychopath or sociopath, they are dangerous, okay? So, you guys, because you're constantly, you got to worry about, you know, getting yourself killed or something like that because these people can get very violent, all right? Violent if you even look at them a certain way or you, you know, you try to give it back to them, you could be putting your life in danger or be in danger of getting hurt. So how do you leave, just in general, we're going to talk about in general, how do you leave a narcissist? Well, here's the thing. A lot of people are looking for closure. You need to forget about that closure, okay? Your closure is the fact that you caught these people lying or cheating or being deceptive, you know, misleading you, uh, anytime you see toxic behavior where somebody has lied to you, deceived you, they put you down, they criticized you, you don't owe them an explanation of why you're leaving them, okay? A lot of people feel like, well, I just want to tell the narcissist off and, you know, let them know what a piece of garbage they are. But see, here's the thing, you guys, you could do that and you can get a minute of satisfaction but the narcissist really doesn't care. All they're going to be looking at, they're, they're just going to twist it around, call you crazy because, you know, they won't say, oh, you know, they're not going to look at themselves with shame. So they're going to block out that shame and just look at you like you're crazy. And then they're just going to move on to somebody else. OK, and then smear you behind your back and cause any problems that they could cause because now you created a narcissistic injury by telling them off or exposing them. So the best way to leave a narcissist is to leave them cold, cold in their tracks, all right? Let them sit there baffled, wondering what just happened. And they'll figure it out because they know what they do. And they'll figure, oh, they finally figured out my game. This is what the narcissist is going to figure, figure out, that you finally figured out their game, all right? So you don't have to explain them to them what you're doing and you don't have to ask for closure because you're not going to get that closure. Narcissists like to leave the door open for two reasons. One, because they may want to try to come back and use you for something. And two, because they want to plant doubt in you. Okay. Doubt by not giving you closure. So by them not telling you, yeah, I was wrong or I did this or, or something, they want that they're leaving that confusion and doubt in you. And that's what they want to do because this will help them to feel like you're the problem and make you feel like you're the problem. See, narcissists love their tool is confusion. They want to confuse you because in confusing you, it makes them right 
and, and makes you wrong, okay? But see, here's the thing. Narcissists, you know, these people waste your time and they waste your life. So the best way to leave a narcissist is to have a plan, okay? If you're living with that narcissist, the way you, you do it is you have a plan. You know where you're going. You know how you're going to support yourself. You, you know, you don't worry about the smear campaign. When you leave a narcissist, you've got to automatically expect that they're going to smear you, okay? Because they're not just going to leave peacefully. It's like when you go to court with a narcissist, very rarely, or you get a divorce rather, very rarely can you ever get a mediator to mediate a divorce with a narcissist because they don't want to do it in a, you know, a, a, a peaceful way. They want to torture you for the breakup and, and they want to pay you back. So you're going to have to get a lo good lawyer that's going to represent you well, all right? Don't chintz out on a lawyer, okay? Because this is your life. This is determining your life and also, you know, the what's going to happen with your children as well if you have children. So obviously when you leave a narcissist and you have children, it's going to be stickier than when you just leave them and you don't have kids. When you don't have kids, it's a lot easier to just take off, never talk to them again, block them across the board, you know, and here's the problem that a lot of people, you know, the problem that they do is that they still communicate with the narcissist. You've got to go completely no contact with a narcissist when you have no children, okay? Now, we know when you have children, obviously, you've got to deal with the narcissist, unfortunately. And the best way to do that, you guys, I found is by text. This was told to me by my lawyers, is by text. You document everything. They talk about parallel pa parenting, you know. But the best thing to do is minimal contact, just issues about the children. You, you don't get your emotions into it. You don't go back and forth with the narcissist because you're just going to aggravate yourself, okay? So when you leave the narcissist and you don't have children, <coughs> excuse me, you can make a clean break. You don't have to deal with that person. If you see that person out, you make like you don't know them. If they try to contact you, you don't say anything. You just keep blocking, 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 blocking. If they get to a point of harassment, they're harassing you in any way. Maybe they're driving by your house. Maybe they're writing you threatening emails or texting threatening things. Then you have to take legal action or contact the police, okay? If you're dealing with somebody who is stalking you. So you guys, the best way to do it is no communication, no contact. Because if you have any contact with the narcissist, it's giving that you're feeding the narcissist. It's giving them hope that they could weasel their way back into your lives. Okay. And what a lot of them will do is a lot of them will say things like, well, can't we just still be friends? They don't want to be your friend. What they want to do is know what's going on in your life. And then they feel like they can manipulate their way back in for whatever it is. Maybe they still want sex from you. And this is what a lot of narcissists do as well. They're still having sex with their exes, even though they're broken up because they've manipulated that person to, you know, still care about them. And the other reason why you want to go completely no contact when you leave the narcissist is because you're going to be vulnerable when you leave the narcissist. You're still healing. So any contact with that, that narcissist is going to open up those wounds, all right? And it's going to be harder and it's going to take longer to get over this person if you're still getting an occasional text or you're still talking to them from time to time. You've got to shut that door. In order to heal, you've got to shut that door because every time they contact you, it's going to affect your emotions. See, we go no contact, not to punish the narcissist, but to have our own peace and to heal and to respect ourselves. See, this person, they violated you in every way, okay? They disrespected you. They treated you like a fool because narcissists think they're smarter than you and they treat you like a fool. So now... Again, you don't owe them anything. You don't owe them anything. And I had a I had a client say 
their narcissist contacted them and said they were, you know, th th it was an emergency, this and that. And then when they contacted the narcissist, they were laughing and said, no, it wasn't emer an emergency. I just wanted to see if you would call. See, narcissists play games like this. Or, the, or they'll threaten, if you're dealing with a malignant narcissist, they may threaten to, to commit suicide. I dealt with a narcissist that did that. Threatened to commit suicide, even posted videos on my girlfriend's Facebook page because he couldn't get through to me. And it was all to control you to try to get you back, okay? Whatever that narcissist does after you leave the relationship, that's on them, you're no longer a part of that narcissist's life and you're not the red cross, okay? You're not the red cross that's gonna come in and save them. Nobody can save the narcissist but themselves and whoever they have in their life, their flying monkey or their friends or their family. It is not your responsibility to save this person, okay? And this is how they will try to control you. They'll try to control you with suicide threats. And by the way, anybody that, that, that says something like that to you is somebody that you have to be very careful of because if they're, if they're threatening suicide, it could be dangerous. It, it could be a dangerous situation where not only are they going to threaten suicide on themselves, but also on you as well, okay? So you need to get away from that, these people. You need to you protect yourself in every way so that they can't get to you. You know, in some cases, you may need a restraining order if they keep harassing you. And every time they harass you, document it. Document it so that if you have to go to court, you could show the courts that this person is harassing you. If they send you any threatening notes or texts or post anything that's threatening, take a screenshot, print it out, Show them, and this is how you get your restraining order as well, because you need proof in order to get a straining order, restraining order. But understand this, even with a restraining order, it will not protect you 100%. How do I know? Because I had a friend who got killed, and she had a restraining order with the button to notify the police, and he actually showed up at her job, shot her, and shot himself. So a restraining order doesn't always protect you 100%. It helps but you also have to be careful and protect yourself if you're dealing with somebody that could be a malignant narcissist or somebody dangerous, okay, or a psychopath or something like that. But when you're just leaving somebody, you know, and you don't have to worry about these things, you leave them cold, 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 all right? The minute that you find that they're toxic is the minute that nothing nothing else needs to be said. You don't have to point out what they did wrong. You don't have to prove anything to them because they are nothing. Once you realize that you're dealing with a toxic person, the first thing that should come into your mind is, number one, I need to get away from this person. And number two, I don't have to justify or defend myself to this person because they are toxic, which equals they are nothing. They are nothing. They deceived me. I accept the fact that I got played, but now guess what? They will never, ever get another minute of my time or get acknowledgement by me again. They are completely out of my life. And if they keep coming back, I just keep blocking, 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 blocking. Okay? Like I had somebody say, well, I don't usually block them. I just don't respond to them. And you should block them, okay? Because if you don't respond to them and you, you leave them unblocked, they're going to still think that you care. Okay, the fact that you didn't have the the courage to block them is showing them in their minds, they may think that, that they could still come back into your life. They still think you care. You have to let that narcissist know that you don't care at all and that you respect yourself. And the fact that they did all the toxic things that they did to you, lying to you, deceiving to you, you maybe cheated on you, is you know proof enough that you don't need to say one word to them, not one word. You're going to kill them out with silence. That's what you're going to do, okay? And the other thing too is if you come back at the narcissist and, and have it out with them, you're leaving yourself 
as a target because you're creating a narcissistic injury, which means that that narcissist may come back for revenge and you just don't need that shit in your life. It's not worth it because you're not proving anything to them, you know, because they won't acknowledge what you're saying. They're just going to always think you're crazy and think that they did everything for you and you're unappreciative and, you know, you see it all wrong. You know, narcissists only want to see what they want to see. So in that sense, you guys, you don't have to prove anything to them. And by walking away cold, it's like you're not leaving yourself open as a target either for them to keep attacking you. You know, the narcissist is going to get bored with it after a while. When you're not even responding to them, they're going to get bored with it and they're going to move on to other supply. They're, they're going to move on to other supply anyway, but narcissists also, they love drama. Why? Because they love to see you up, get upset. They love to see you yell and scream. Why? Because now they know they upset you. They upset your day. So why do you want to even give them that satisfaction? You don't. You want to treat them like they are the the dirt and shit on the bottom of your shoe. They're not even worth your time or your breath, okay? This is how you move on and you leave the narcissist. Now, when you have kids, and I've got to do a podcast on this, you know, I've done, you know, divorcing a narcissist, but I'm going to do also, you know, how to defeat a narcissist and destroy them in court. Okay. Cause I was in court for three years and then I went back to court this year again. So I'm going to talk about, you know, what's good to do in when you're dealing with a narcissist in court as well. But you know, when there's kids involved and you're leaving a narcissist, you've got to have a stipulation, a legal agreement specifying all the needs for the, the divorce and the needs for the kids. What's visitation going to be? What's the financial responsibility going to be? You know, um, what's the college going to be in the future? You got to think in the future too. You want all of this in your legal stipulation for divorce. That is your Bible. That is your grounds to go after them in court. So when you go to div- when you go to divorce court, you guys, all right, Supreme Court, whatever it is, when you go to court with this, you want everything right in that legal stipulation, that divorce stipulation, stating how you guys are going to co-parent, all right, when you leave the narcissist. And you want to make sure you get it right. That's why your lawyer's got to negotiate and make sure all the terms are right in the agreement, you know, when you finalize the divorce, before you finalize the divorce. And that is what you follow when you leave the narcissist and you're co-parenting. So that when that narcissist violates the agreement, okay, the stipulation, now you have grounds to take them to court. Let's say they're not paying child support. You go to child support enforcement agency that will go after them and garnish their wages or take their license away if they owe over $4,000. I know it's like $4,200 or something in New York State. Or visitation, if they're not coming to get the kids. What you do, you say, judge, they're not coming to get the kids. Then at that point, maybe you can get full custody because you're showing that they're not co-parenting the way they should co-parent, all right? But understand this, judges really... They don't really care as much about the co-parenting as they do about the financial obligation when it comes to divorce with children. They're more worried about the financial aspect of it, all right? What is owed financially to the children? They can't force a parent to take their children, okay? They, the courts don't do that, and I, I understand why they don't, because they don't want to give the kids to somebody who really doesn't want them because they may abuse the children. So they don't, they don't push that. The courts don't push forcing somebody to come take their children, but they do enforce that they got to pay when it comes to, you know, child support and issues like that and financial obligations. So that's how you go about it when you leave the narcissist. And now other things when you leave the narcissist as well, when you leave the narcissist and let's say you're cohabitating or you're married to the person, you've got to think about your financial situation, how you're going to support yourself, how you're going to take care of your kids. 
Um, if you don't have those kind of worries and you're not married to the person or you don't have children to, with the person, then you just, you know, you have to have a plan. When you leave a narcissist, you have to have a plan if you were in a serious relationship with them. If you were not in a serious relationship with them, you know, where you were living together with them or something along those lines, then it's a lot easier to just be like, goodbye, good luck, get your stuff and get the fuck out, okay? <laughs> you know, any kind of thing that where you signed a lease with them and you're living with them, that gets tricky, that gets tricky. And that's why you need to go talk to an attorney with any kind of legal, you know, complications where you're stuck with the narcissist and have to work things out. But if you don't have those problems, you're lucky and you just leave the narcissist cold with no explanation. You don't have to explain jack shit to a narcissist because they played you for a fool. They played you for a fool. Just make sure when you leave that narcissist, that it's a permanent leave because if you let them back in, they're going to repeat whatever they did and they're going to make, they're going to be even worse because you took them back and now they think you're weak and desperate and can't live without them. So they're going to treat you even worse. Okay. This is why it's even worse when you let them back in. So when you leave the narcissist, it's got to be clean, cold, you know, cold, you guys, cold as ice, you leave them. And if you have to talk to them about anything, strictly business, okay? Just what you need to get done. Let's say the two of you shared a dog. You you, you work out and say, you know, however you're going to work it out with them. If you have a problem, you may have to go to court about it, okay? If you can't work it out with them. But other than that, if you don't have any strings with the narcissist, you just leave them cold. You pack up your shit, you have a place to go and you get the fuck out. Or if they're in your place, you get them out, all right? It, however, if you have to get an order of the court, you get them out, okay? So, but you know, don't ever don't ever waver with the narcissist because then the narcissist feels that they could manipulate you. You know, any time that you go back and forth with a narcissist, a narcissist likes it because you're giving them attention. You want to you want to starve that narcissist, and the way you starve that narcissist is by not giving them any attention, by ignoring them. You don't give a shit what they post on their social media. Who cares because they're toxic? Of course they're going to post negative shit about you to their friends and family, but who cares about their friends and family too? They're probably toxic as well. So why do you care about any of these people and what they say? You shouldn't. You're going this way and they're left back in the wind, okay? You're moving forward and they're staying in the same spot they're going to stay the rest of their life because they don't know how to progress in life, all right? So Stop caring about what they say, if they smear you, what their friends are saying, what the flying monkeys are saying. Who the fuck cares? Who are these people anyway? Ask yourself, who are they and who are they to judge you? They didn't live with the narcissist. They don't they didn't have to deal with the narcissist. They only see one side. And it, maybe even if they know that the narcissist is toxic, they're with the narcissist because they need the narcissist for something or they're afraid of them. But whatever it is, that shouldn't concern you. What should concern you is moving forward in your life and being around your supporters, your people, the people that got your back and will be there for you when you leave that narcissist, okay? Okay. So you guys, I'm losing my voice. I'm always preaching. So if you like the podcast, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio 
where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day